Uh, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Hello, dear friends and students. In this video, I want to explain the sub type subsystem of AIS. Uh, basically, these are the subsystem of AIS. The AIS itself is uh, divided into three parts. The first part is called TPS, and the second part is called RIS, and the next part is called what? BIS. Uh, basically, uh, at the top we have IS. It means information system. The information system for accounting is divided into two parts. The first part is AIS, and the second part is, of course, DSS. What is DSS? We will explain it. So when we say AIS, information system, so we, if it is for the management, it is also divided into two parts. In the management, AIS is divided into two parts, MIS and DSS. So for bank also, BIS, for example, DSS. But for in the case of accounting, information system is divided into two parts. One is AIS and the second one is DSS. But our main focus is on this one, what is uh, different types of AIS. One part of AIS is called TPS, second part is called RIS, and the next part is called BIS. See one more thing is mentioned here, structured, structured and semi-structured, we will discuss later on after explaining the each part. So first of all, let us go for this part. The first part of AIS is TPS. TPS means Transaction Processing System. The responsibility of this system is to record and process the data. Recording and processing of the transaction or business transaction is the responsibility of this part. So once again, let me read it. It records and processes the data resulting from the business transaction. So the responsibility of TPS, Transaction Processing System, is just to take the business transaction, record and process it. That's it. Rest of the information is belong to other part. Now the question arises, for example, from where to get the business transaction. What do you mean by business transaction? So for the purpose, for this purpose, various transaction cycle works such as this one. These are the site of or the types of the transaction that we have in the business. Four type of cycles we have in the business which generate what business transaction. Revenue cycle belongs sales, for example. Several transactions we have, for example, regarding sales, sale of the goods, sale of the machine, sale of the equipment, providing discount for them, receive amount from the customers, for example, how much they paid, how much they will pay, how much bad it is and cut and so on, right? All these are the types of transactions that are belong to revenue cycle. The second type of uh, cycle which generate business transaction for us is, for example, expenditure cycle. For example, what we purchase, how much we paid, how much we have to pay, right? How much discount they will provide, and so on. These are the sort of transactions that we have regarding the financial cycle. And the next cycle is conversion cycle. It also generates accounting or business transactions. For example, uh, this is especially important in the case of manufacturing organizations, which they convert raw materials into finished goods. So several steps are there. And a particular branch of accounting is allocated for this one, which is called uh, cost accounting. So cost accounting, for example, talks about and records several transactions that how much inventory, how much work in progress, how much finished goods, how much raw materials, how much labor costs, how much overhead we incur. So this is also a kind of business transaction. And finally, which is very important, is financial cycle. It talks about, for example, from where we received money, for example, we are spending money, how we have made investment, how we have taken loan, so to which bank we have deposited, how much interest we receive, how much interest we have to pay. All these are the business transactions that we have in the business. So once again, let me summarize. The first part of AIS is TPS. TPS just simply means record the transaction and process it. So from where we get the business transactions, we get the business transactions from these four cycles. Let me give a simple example of TPS. For example, in QuickBook, this part of the QuickBook generate the TPS. For example, the vendor section. So through vendor section, we can, for example, enter the bill, pay the bill, and so on. Purchasing is possible through this section. So this is one of the section that generate TPS. The customer section, for example, we sell for the customer, right? So this is the initial part or the transaction part. How much we sold for the customer, how much they paid, how much they have to pay for us, all these are the part of TPS. Banking section of, for example, the QuickBook. 
provide us the EPS or transaction. Writing a check, for example, entering credit card, use your register, make deposit, transfer fund, all of these are the kinds of transactions for us. Here it is. Or, for example, one more section in the QuickBook by the name of Make General Journal Entry. Make General Journal Entry also will create a TPS, for example, for us, which is record and process the transaction. That was the first part of uh, AIS. The second part of AIS is Responsibility Information System, or uh, you can say, for example, RIS. Responsibility Information System, the, the responsibility of this part is basically to do this one, to generate the reports. Providing the report is the responsibility of the section. The first section, record and process, and the second section, provide the report. Report, for example, as I have shown you before in the QuickBook, these are the types of report. Report, for example, for customers, report, for example, for vendors, report for the purchase, report for inventory, report for the employees, for the bank, for the tax, for everything, we should provide a report. So this is the responsibility of which section? Responsibility of RIS. The next part is, of course, uh, BIS, or Budgeting Information System. The responsibility of this section is to prepare budget statements for the organization. For a specific time period and this is also available in the quickbook one section of the quick is by the name of budgeting planning and budgeting so set up a budget forecasting budget making cash flow making for example using business plans tools so uh, this can be called a what as a bis bis simply means once again budgeting information system make a budget statement for the organization budget means for example to estimate about the future how much will be the inflow how much will be the outflow so these were the three types of what? Three types of AIS. So three types of AIS, TPS, uh, RIS, and VIS. Now let us go for this part. Why it's called a structure, this is a structure, this is clean structure. Anything which link with the past, anything which is, for example, we can say mechanical, it is repeated in nature, and it deals with the past only, it can be called a what as a structure. TPS is the structured process. Why it is the structured process? Because in the accounting, you know, for example, what is debit and credit, what is credit, you just record in the book of accounts. So you don't think about the future. You just record what happened in, what happened in the past, you just record. How much expense incurred, how much revenue incurred, you just record. RIS, reporting system, is also basically on the past. No one provides report for the future. Always report it for the past. But only the one section is called semi structure. BIS budgeting information system. Remember, while making the budget, we deal with the past as well as we deal with the very future. So, while making a budget for the organization, for a country, and so on, we check the past record of the business or past record of the country. And by considering some specific criteria or indicators in the future, then we make a budget for the future. So, that is why, as it links with the past as well as with the future, this can be called a word as a semester. But this one, which we will explain it, this is basically an structure. If we classify this one according to the level of management, this is the lower level management, lower level management, middle level management, and this is what? Top level management. So usually the activities which are taken by the top management is an structure. An structure means for that one there is no past information. And it is... It, it happened in the business for the first time. So this is the problem which raised for the first time. You have to find out a solution for that. This can be called as well DSS. DSS means decision support system. We will explain it shortly. But the rest of the thing is basically structured or either unstructured. Uh, structured or semi-structured. Semi-structured means, of course, it already happened in the past. It is repeating in nature. This is also repeating in nature, not nothing new in this one. But in BIS, which is a semi structure, of course, in this we have something new uh, and the proper information is not available, so we have to talk about the future as well. But some clue is available from the past. But in decision support system, so that we will explain it, it is basically totally unstructured and it depends on the top management. Why? Because usually top management should be. With those situations that comes to the business for the first time. For example, a nice example is our election. 
So when the same country, two presidents. So it comes for the first time, so the top people should think of how to solve it, right? So it's a big issue for us. So for that one, there should be a proper decision support system. Yeah, we explain this part. Only this part is remaining, yeah? Decision support system. Decision support systems are most useful at the strategic level. Strategic level, it means high level. Where the decisions are unstructured, problems are unique, and once the decision is made, the information system used for it is no longer applicable in this current time. So why? Because the transaction, the problem happened for the first time, and we find a particular or unique solution for that one. And the information system which we generate for this problem cannot be used in the same format for the future. That is why we can say that decision, decision support system is totally unstructured. So in the next video, inshallah, we'll talk about something about the types of uh, flow or information flow in the